We are tonight's entertainment. What the fuck is this, Chet? Mm-hmm. This is a tasty burger. Were you rushing or were you drinking? You like Huey Lewis in the news? Is this your homework, Larry? Why, Good day there, boys. Me. Haven't been talking to the cops now, have you, mate? The cops now, have you, mate? You're trying to build me a Star Wars off later. <laughs> and Mendelssohn. <laughs> Huge fan. Huge fan. Um, welcome back, <laughs> fellas. The film scoop. Motherfucking film scoop. Film scoop. No one scoops film like the motherfucking Get film. Get out of your chairs and fucking feel it, dude. We've got you for three minutes. Three minutes of playtime. Playtime. The bone saw oh, is oh, ready. Shit, just, I, I mean, I'm, there's a missile in my pants right now. <laughs> I'm going to be 100% honest with you right now. Rock fucking hard. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, welcome back, fellas. Got an interesting episode lined up. Dude, I don't... Th- this is going to be a rough episode for me, dude. Why? I am not... For those of you that don't know, the intelligence level on me, small. Yep, in the uh, gutter. Yeah, it's very... Uh, you take that intelligence slider, you minimize it. Yeah, you're the guy at the bowling alley that puts on the cords. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I use the dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me. Uh, dude, I, I feel like I'm not good at all coming up with any of this stuff you gave me. It's all going to be, you're going to go, what the fuck were you trying to say? And I'm, in my head, it makes sense. But I'm a fucking dumbass. So well, to... to to the initiated, it's not going to make sense, probably. There's only one game you're talking about where that would be, like, the case. I I, I, listen, I probably did bad in all of them. But there's nothing to do bad. We'll see. Okay, well, I guess You we'll, say that, we'll and then it. how many times have I been a dumbass? Like, really? Like, there's only one thing where it's up to your creativity. Like, the other things are just, like, Well, facts. we'll see how I, how I do. I, I was trying to not do obvious things, so... Mm. That was probably a detriment. Um, but you did know how to do the the picture I sent you, right? I mean, yeah, probably not as efficiently as how you have it set up. I just have it in my notes. I just the did the notes with all the categories. I basically yeah. copied your picture into my notes and then just wrote down the answers to all the categories. Okay. Yeah, we're going to try some new stuff this episode. Because um, there's no big release this week. We're kind of in a shithole right now with new releases. Um, I mean, unless you wanted to get a episode on the crow i don't think anyone (laughs) anyone wants that i love the scoopers but even if you did want that i'm afraid i couldn't i think (laughs) i think i'd I'd do the carl versus hydraulic press challenge before i did (laughs) before i did the crow review dude Dude, i was uh driving (coughs) to somewhere which i'll mention in a minute but i was i had like a hour drive somewhere and i got bored so i put on an old episode and I put on our Guys Being Dudes episode, because that's my favorite. That's our best episode. I think it's our best, and that's yeah. my favorite to listen to. And that when that came out, they had just released the trailer for The Crow, and we were talking about it. And in the episode, I was like, yeah, I mean, I don't have opinions, like, one way or the other. Like, I, I don't love it or hate it. I, I, I think I'll check it out and, you know, see what's, you know, see what all the fuss is about. And then I was like, man, just... <laughs> I just lied. <laughs> I did not watch it. I had no interest in like once. Well, we the saw what the fuss out, was about, and the fuss was goddamn. It sucks, <laughs> dude. This shit smells bad. And the fuss was <coughs> not at all, boy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yay! <laughs> um, <coughs> but yeah, I didn't feel like watching the crow. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe yeah. I'm bad at my at at what we do here but no dude I think I'd rather have my ass torn apart and just, <laughs> just drink I'd it. rather you shit your yeah, pants again. I'd rather just drink a bunch of laxatives and, and camp out here for like <laughs> two months before I watch The Crow yeah but uh so we have some new stuff planned which we'll we'll just leave up for surprises yeah. when, when they come up but first things first small scoop of life A football comes back this week my man side's coming out hell yeah not a very manly person Except for football. Dude. That's like, that's a, a very vital part of me because, when, yeah. like, I have very uh, non manly <laughs> hobbies, but then football, like, like what do anchors you, me down. What are you doing that's not manly? Oh, just like reading and 
like watching movies and yeah reading is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like reading is fucking gay yeah <laughs> but it's really not not yeah. that bad listening you don't do to, anything super uh well listening to the, adrian lenker yeah some of the stuff gay. you listen to is a little rough uh, well that's not what i used to describe <laughs> i wouldn't describe it as rough uh, I would, i'd call it rough dude i wouldn't i don't no, but <laughs> she had no <laughs> talking about no, my dude. taste in music. No, when football comes around, you turn into a forty-seven-year-old man. Yeah. You just, you, like you don't care. I need to hire about some ladies to pretend to be my wife so I can beat her. <laughs> yeah, dude, and yell at like, my kids. Talk, talk to strangers, get into fights. Like yeah. when it comes to football, there is you drop the cage on the ring yeah. when it comes to football. Need to get a Confederate flag sh- tattoo on my shoulder. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. become We're, the most dude ever. Wear a wife beater to the gas <laughs> station, get a pack of cigarettes. Hell yeah. And a 40 ounce. Is it is that a beer? 40? Uh, it's not a beer, but it's a size, yeah. <laughs> Two 40s. Two 40s. Wasn't well. that Conan? That was. Yeah, that sketch the sketch with a uh, Ice Cube and Kevin Hart. Yeah. Yeah, it was that's that's good stuff. Anyways, um, and my second scoop of life is that I spent like ten hours making a YouTube video that no one watched. Whoa! So that's nice. Pretty awesome. What was the YouTube video? It was a alien ranking. Oh. And when I made I made an X Men ranking, which did pretty well. I actually was happy with very like, controversial the audience, like the audience that it had. But then I like watched. Like, I tried to make the video better. Like, I tried to improve on the X-Men video. Yeah, and yeah. And one of the things Alan said was, like, try to get footage that syncs up with what you're talking about. Which, obviously, that sounds like a no-brainer. Like, obviously, you do that. But that takes a long time to go get footage of exactly what you're talking about and put it exactly in the right spot in the video. Mm-hmm. So, it's just more work, and it takes a lot longer to do that. But I spent the extra time and, like, tried to sync it up. And then, once I got everything done... I uploaded it, and then it kept getting copyright striked. Nice. So it would say, this this section of the video is copyrighted. You need to take it out. It was like a 15-second clip. And I was like, okay. So I went to the editing <coughs> software, like put a picture over it, and broke up the 15 seconds, put it back in, and then that part cleared, and then now there's a new one. Like, awesome. past, like they don't tell you all of the copyright strikes at the same time. They don't say, here's six strikes, it's this part, this part, this part, this part. So you can just go fix all yeah, of them. Yeah, that would make time. too much sense. Yeah, so they do one at a time. So I go fix that one, and then I... It takes a long time to, like, render out another video. Like, I have yeah. to go back, change that one thing, and then export it again. And then upload it to YouTube, and let it upload again. And then it'll say, oh, now, yeah, so that part's good now, but now this is fucked up. So it was, like, five times of doing that. And, uh... So I eventually got it up. And it wasn't, um, when I say copyright strike, like, I'm not talking about demonetization. I don't make any money off anything I do. Yeah. I don't, and some things get copyright striked, but they stay up, which is what happened with my X-Men video. It got copyrighted, but it said it doesn't affect your video or the channel. So I was like, okay, I don't care. Yeah. As long as people can still watch it, I don't care. But the, the alien video was blocked everywhere. Like, nobody could watch it. So I had to keep, that was a fucking headache. And then I got all that done, and then <laughs> nobody's watching it. But Hell yeah. that's just uh, par for the course, you know. When you have that's a just, small channel, that's it's, just what's going to happen. Some of them will do better than others, and you know, just got to roll with the punches. It's a labor of love, you know. You yep. just gotta, you gotta get in there, and you gotta do it. Yep. But <coughs> I do like making videos, so I guess that's that's the point. Yeah. You know, I'm glad. It's like, I'm... It's like the scene in Surfs Up, where where Cody is so. Um, He's so focused on winning and winning the surf championship and Big Z's disappointed in him because he wants him to have fun. Yeah. He wants him to enjoy the ride. Yeah. And Cody, Cody keeps trying to rush through it and get to the finish line. And then, and then he finally tells Cody like, are you having fun? And he was like, yeah, I'm having fun. He was like, well, congratulations. You passed. Let's go surf. You trying to get me to cry dude, right now, dude? Was I'm this crying. Your, was this your plan all along? That's just I need I need that's my next video is breaking down surfs up. Dude, I could talk about surfs up for fucking hours, dude. I fucking love surfs up. It's dude. so good. So fucking good. Um, this is Melinda. 
Um, I'm the tank. (laughs) Sorry. I'm the tank. Um, Okay. And then one thing of news. It's not official news, but it's just a a report. Apparently, Josh Brolin has been offered the role of Hal Jordan in Lanterns. Mm. Lanterns is going to be... Is it animated? No. Okay. I can't keep track of which one he's doing animated or not. Um... I don't, uh, I don't like that pick. I don't either. I think it, it, I think what that says, if it's true, it means that they're going with an older Hal Jordan that's going to be like teaching John Stewart. And I would rather that not be the case. I'd rather <clears throat> just have both of them. Like both, both fairly young and in their primes, like Jensen Ackles age. Yeah. yeah. Like he can be a min, like he can be like a big brother type, you know, like. He can have more experience and be more mature than John Stewart, but like, I don't want him to be old. Yeah. And no, before anyone says it, like, no, it doesn't matter that he's played Cable and Thanos. I don't give a fuck about that. Those are different universes. Yeah. I just would rather John uh, Hal Jordan not be old. Yeah. Older. I mean, Josh Brolin looks better than me, and you know, like that goes without saying. Yeah. Like, even at his age, he still looks great. But if you had to put on put your money on someone dying first, I would put it on. <laughs> I put it on <laughs> before I put it on uh, yeah. Josh Brolin. Dude. Yeah, um, and Josh Brolin's a great actor, so I'm sure if he got the role, like it'd be great. But yeah, he's it's not just gonna... it's it's less about the casting and more about the fact that I don't want Hal Jordan. I don't want them to go down the old Hal Jordan route. It's more like the writing and char- and story choice. Yeah, that it's, I'm it's more with. like because if you're gonna cast an old Hal Jordan, sure, he looks exactly how I would think an old Hal Jordan would probably look. Yeah. But I want more of like a Jensen Ackles, Chris Pine type. Yeah, it's more just like the vibe that I want to see is is that instead of Josh Brolin. Because we've never had a good live action Hal Jordan. Like, yeah. Like right out of the comic books, traditional Hal Jordan. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I guess it, it doesn't really matter. We haven't really had a good, like any of the Green Lantern. So we haven't had... That's why we need to get Hal it right. Jordan. We haven't had uh, Stuart. We haven't had Kyle Rayner. Like we haven't... Yeah, but if you start with this one, this is going to be like the definitive Hal Jordan, and then yeah. all the general audiences are going to think he's the old guy. Like yeah. that's just that's just Hal Jordan no, is no. the old one. You're right. It it does make sense. Like you got to start with, like it would be weird if you started with Wally West instead of Barry Allen if you yeah. did Flash. Exactly. So yeah, you're right. Um, but yeah, that's the only news. So I'll go ahead and get into my trivia. Okay. This one might be a little hard because you haven't seen it in a while but okay i thought it was funny. i've got some stuff like that okay um in the killer when the killer is buying a gun from a weapons dealer he pulls out a silencer and puts it on the gun what does the dealer say when he does that oh my god he makes a really funny remark and we like laughed really hard <laughs> at it i don't even i don't remember him remember going it, to but... a weapons dealer yeah it's a it's a van in the, like a parking lot Oh, God, no, you'll have to tell me. I don't remember. Yeah, he... Uh, Fassbender pulls out the silencer and puts it on his gun, and... Uh, what did he say, like, got, brought your own hardware or something? <laughs> very close. He goes, ah, he brings his own potato. <laughs> God damn, that movie's good, dude. Great question, dude. I, I had you the killer it out on. of the park. Dude. I was doing some coding and I had the killer on in the background, and I was like, "Holy fuck!" <laughs> so I'm potato. putting that in my notes now. That's so fucking funny. <coughs> All right. Um, how many products does Patrick Bateman use in his morning routine, not counting the ice pack? God damn, a lot. <laughs> um, <coughs> I know he uses like four in the shower. I'm going to go with seven products. Not including the ice pack, it was nine. Nine day, yeah. And just in case the scoopers are wondering. After I remove the ice pack, I use a deep pore cleanser lotion. In the shower, I use a water-activated gel cleanser, then a honey almond body scrub, and on the face, an exfoliating gel scrub. Then I apply a herb mint facial mask, which I leave on for ten minutes while I prepare the rest of my routine. I always use an a- I always use an aftershave lotion with little or no alcohol because alcohol dries out your skin and makes you look older. Then moisturizer, then anti-aging eye balm, 
followed by a final moisturizing protective lotion. Dude. That's all nine right there. If that's what it takes to be hot, I need to start investing. That's like probably 10% <laughs> of what Hollywood actors do like every day to, yeah. to do all their shit and look how they do. And then I have one uh, guess the movie by the quote. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get into yeah. acting mode. <clears throat> Well, it'd be nice to see. <laughs> that, is, <coughs> that is Jonah Hill in Django Unchained. It is. Hell yeah. Yeah. What a... Dude. <laughs> bravo on the, yeah. on the trivia. That, that was all good stuff. <laughs> all Nobody's right. saying it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> now, not to point any fingers... They could have been done a little better. <laughs> <coughs> All right. My trivia. Hit me. I have a guess the movie by the cast. Chris Evans, Billy Bob Thornton, Ana de Armas. Have I seen it? Yeah. You don't like it. I would say you probably hate it. Okay, well, I haven't seen a ton of Billy Bob Thornton. I know that Chris Evans and Ana de Armas are in Knives Out. I know they're in Ghosted, but I, don't, I haven't seen that, so I don't feel like you would give me that. I don't even know what that is. It's not Ghosted. Good. Keep it that way. I'll narrow it down for you. Not Ghosted. Um, <coughs> she's in Knock Knock, but I don't think Chris Evans is in that. Unless he had some cameo. Um... You gotta hope he didn't. <laughs> Blade Runner. She's in Blonde, but I didn't see that. You're sure I've seen this? I'm positive. And it's not anything I've said. Nothing you've said. Ana de Armas. She's in uh, No Time to Die, but Chris Evans is not. Is it animated? No. Live action. He brings his own potato. <laughs> oh, the gray man. That's it. You got it. Yeah. Heck yeah. You, you pulled a fast one on me, not I, Ryan Gosling. I man. did. I, I knew that. Like I initially didn't easy. put in Chris Evans, and I put in Ryan Gosling, and I was like, he's going to know immediately the second I say Ryan Gosling. Well, Blade <coughs> Runner probably would have been my first guess. but Yeah, but Billy Bob Thornton would have been the dead giveaway that it wasn't Blade Runner. Yeah, but I would have just assumed he's in it. <laughs> like I don't. I, he's not a very like recognizable guy to me. Yeah, that's true. I only really know him from Bad Santa, and... That one scene from Monster Ball. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you catch my drift, I'm buddy. picking up <laughs> intercourse. Yeah, yeah um, that happens. I think the first <coughs> Billy Bob Thornton movie I saw was like, like I I saw The Gray Man, but I didn't even know he was in that. But like the first one I recognized, like okay, this is that Billy Bob Thornton guy, was Armageddon, which uh, I watched like last month. Yeah. You, you seen Sling Blade? No. Oh yeah. That's his big uh, magnum opus, I think, yeah. is Sling Blade. Yeah. It ain't got no gas in it. Mm, taters. <laughs> <laughs> you, nailed it. you nailed it, dude. <laughs> I thought he was here with us. I don't, you don't even need to watch it anymore. I was. I got scared. I was like, he's going to think we're talking shit and he's going to beat our ass. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Uh, this is an easy one. Probably for you. Okay. Uh, what year was Blade released? 1998. Nailed it. I mean... Right off the bat. Yep. All right. Now, this one was tricky for me because I forgot one of the two. But um, what are the names of the brothers in Warrior? Tommy and Brennan. Hell, yeah. I Tommy's drilled Tommy, in my head because of, you're a big warrior, Tommy. I mean, come on. And their last name's Conlon, right? Yeah. Yeah. You That's think you're, crazy. That's you crazy. You're team, tripping man. me up on I, I forgot that the that uh, Joel's name was Brendan. Uh, <coughs> now why don't you take your war stories down to the VFW? Because maybe they'll give a damn. Nah, nah, so, you weren't there. You weren't there when I, when my mother was in a house without heat, puking up blood. Nah, you're out there <laughs> drunk on our hands and knees, puking up blood. I don't need you now. 
I feel like that's a pretty good title. <coughs> you sound like you don't like you don't listening. speak English. <laughs> <laughs> You sound like you, you have <laughs> rubber bands around your tongue. Now. I want you to know, <laughs> you saying I don't need you now was as good as my bone <laughs> chickens. That was the closest to Tom Hardy I think anyone's ever been, dude. That was crazy. That you just pulled it out of your ass. <laughs> it's a real nice thing what you did with that boy in that tank, Tommy. Yeah. That's my if you ever, If you want to do Nick Nolte, just <laughs> swallow some glass. <laughs> I got a bucket of you'll, rusty nails yeah, for you to swallow. Fucking nail Nick Nolte. <laughs> You're a big warrior, Tommy. <laughs> I would have told him to fuck off too, dude. My dad sounds like that. Get away from me. Yeah, but don't touch me. I'm going to go down. <laughs> I don't even care. that you, Like, alcoholism to the side. That's yeah. fucked up, dude. You're killing me. Yeah. <laughs> That's abuse. <laughs> Having to hear that voice. Oh, was that all your trivia? Yeah, that was all my trivia. Okay. All right. So, first up, first thing we're going to try here is if you've ever seen the Trivia 10 on YouTube, shout out to the Trivia 10. Trivia uh, 10. By Tyler Whitmore, the homie. Tyler. Uh, Real Reveal is a game he does on Trivia 10, which I think is pretty awesome. And what you do is you guess what movie, uh, you try to figure out what movie it is. By using the least amount of points <coughs> as possible. So, like, the the better a clue is, the higher it costs to use. And, uh, so, like, I'll, I'll read off all the options. Uh, director costs 25 points. Writers, 25 points. Cinematographers, 10. Top build actors, 25. Second build actors, 20. Third build actors, 15. Release years, 12. Genre, 7. Your letterbox rating is five. Letterboxed average is five. Words in the title is four. Duration is three. Box office is three. Oscar noms is two. And so you try to guess it with using the least amount of points as possible. So it's like golf. Yeah. Lower the better. Um, How many points do you have to start with? I never asked that. I wasn't going to do like... You're going to count how many points like, were used. Yeah, you can't. You see how many <laughs> points you need to get it, and then the lower one, okay. the lower one wins. I got you. Um, I'll go ahead and let you start. You can do yours. I can do mine. Yeah. Do All you? Right. You don't know how you don't have in there how many points they are each. I don't. No. Okay, I'll keep mine out so I can tell you how much they yeah. are. I can tell you right. So the first movie I have, I couldn't figure out your last date watched. It wasn't like I couldn't find it on Letterboxd. It, it probably just haven't. All right, so in. don't uh, don't guess that one. Okay. I'm going to start with release year. 2012. 2012. Okay. And let me get my rating. Your rating is four stars. 2012 four stars okay and i'm at 12 five i'm at 17 points right now 2012 a lot came out in 2012 i was hoping it was a five star so it could help you know yeah narrow it down a little bit for me but i give a lot of movies a four star so that isn't great <laughs> not the best <laughs> um i knew you were gonna do a year so i tried to like blend it up with that okay 2012 2012 was the dark knight rises but it's not that because it'd be a five star Django's a five star i feel like i would have definitely had your last time viewed on that one mm. on those two if that helps at all my huh is it if that helps at all oh that's a good point like this you is something have, I would have logged. absolutely, yeah. Like you've seen it and you've rated it, but you but haven't, I haven't logged. It. I haven't logged it. Yeah, okay. that should narrow it down a lot, or a decent amount. Okay, so that gets rid of one of my guesses, I think, because I was about to say uh, my mind's going to the watch, because I think the watch is 2012 and it it's probably about a four star, but I would have logged that because it's awesome. Yeah, 2012. The Avengers came out in 2012. The first Avengers. 
It did. That's probably a four star. I know that's a four star for me, actually. You can't kill someone and, and take, take their skin! skin. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Guys, there's another one. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to take... Um, I feel like it could be the Avengers. I feel like it fits the criteria. And I don't think I've watched... I don't think I have it logged. Is there any kind of detriment for taking a guess? You lose five points if you guess. Oh, that's not bad. Which is less than, like, most of the clues. But you don't get any new information. Yeah. So it kind of fucks you in the ass. I want to do box office, but I don't know... Like, if it is the Avengers, I don't know exactly how much the Avengers made... I think it was a billion. I think I think box office would help clear things up for you. Well, you're not supposed to say stuff like that, but you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nice me, guy. But okay, I'll try box office. That's right. only a mere 3 points. Yeah, so I'm at 20 yeah. now. The box office 32 million. Oh. Could be the Avengers. <laughs> okay, 32 million 2012. Uh, it's a little over 32 I just did 32 million it's a little over 32 okay another one that came out in 2012 is Silver Linings Playbook mmm 32 sounds about right I don't have it logged I'm gonna guess Silver Linings Playbook it's not Silver Linings Playbook fuck I lost five. So I'm at 25 right now. Getting fucked in the ass. I'm Get happy ass because right. all the clues that are going to help me are like 25 points. <laughs> so as long as you keep hitting 25, okay. I feel okay. I need to get something that will help me. <laughs> um... Give me Fuck that would cost so much. Okay, give me the third build actor. Um this is a scenario where I might have messed up. It's just on letterbox it'll be the third person listed. Alright, that's what I did. Okay. A third build actor, Ty Sheridan. Mm. Brain instantly went to mud, but that's 2014. Unless I'm dumb. No. Or like 2013. But 32 million would be right. I don't have it logged. <coughs> Fuck, maybe I'm just messing up the year. Because I don't know what else Ty Sheridan would be in. Because he's not in... X Men until like Apocalypse. Ready Player One. I'm just gonna guess Mud. It's Mud. Nice. There you go. Okay, so when you said 2014, I was like, oh fuck, did I get the year wrong? <laughs> yeah, so I'll you check your phone and like make sure I didn't fuck up. Yeah, or you didn't fuck up, so that it helped gave me a hint, but yeah. Uh, so that cost me 40 points. So I didn't do too hot. Well, that was I thought that was a hard movie because we haven't seen it in a while. It is you pretty really hard. You logged it. And I almost went with Cinematographer, and that surely wouldn't have helped. Yeah. And then, yeah. Who was the Cinematographer? Adam Stone. Yeah, that wouldn't have Yeah, a lot of the people that come up, uh, we don't really talk about heavily. And like The movie's great. They did a great job in the movie. Yeah. But like, I don't know. That them. was a pretty good one that's like, I know of it, and I know enough about it to guess it. It's just it, under the radar. It's not like... The nice guys. Like yeah. I'm going to guess instantly. Yeah. Let me pull up um, the scoreboard for me so that I can come up with what I want to guess. Because I can tell you right now, uh, Last Date Watched is not going to help. Yeah. If it's not one of the <laughs> ten movies you've ever logged, then it's not going to help. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> there's, there's some stuff on here that's just going to be a waste of points. If it's not Oppenheimer <laughs> or The Open House, then it's, it's not on there. <laughs> I'm just on it. All right. 
Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. All right. Well, what do you want to what do you want to know? I'm going to do two right off the bat. I'm going to do the genre and the number of words in the title. Okay. The genre is crime thriller. Okay. And number of words in the title is two. So you're at 11 points right now. Crime thriller. It's two words. <coughs> All right. That didn't help me as much as I hoped it would. <laughs> well, um, yeah. Let's see what other categories I can get. I'm just having trouble, like, crime thriller in my head instantly went to, like, Seven, Zodiac, Girl of the Dragon. These are all more than two words, or less than two words. Mm -hmm. So, uh, problematic. (laughs) Um, What else could I do? Not going to go for any of the 25. Give me the third build actor. Oh. The third build actor is Charles Parnell. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wasted the old points. <laughs> oh, man. That is unfortunate. <laughs> so you're at 26. Oh. Yep. My ass is gaped right now. <laughs> after that one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Crime thriller, it's two words. There's not a whole lot of categories <laughs> left that would help me. There's a ton that would I help mean, me. there is, but they're all the high ones. Like, I could do lead actor. It sucks for you that you don't know release years. Because that's, like, my go-to that narrows it down a lot. Yeah, yeah. A crime thriller. Why am I having such a hard time with this? I feel like it's such a finite... Well, oh, I mean... Hang on. No, that's not it. Crime Thriller is just such a, like... I never want to guess genre, because I just feel like it's too broad. Like, it doesn't really give me enough to, like, narrow Fuck it, it down. give me a lead actor. Damn, so let me do the points first. You're at 26, this is 25, so you're at 51 now. Yeah. You sure you want to... You will instantly lose fucking, if you do. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Michael Fassbender. A crime thriller. With the Foss man. What the hell? I've seen it? Yeah. Oh my god, is it the killer? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, the, the genre fucked me hard on that, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, because to me it's like a... <laughs> adding in, like, cr- like it's a thriller to me, but adding in, like, crime thriller made me think of, like, uh, like cop movies. Yeah. like If I got crime thriller in this game, I would think, like, Seven, Zodiac. That's what my head went to. Stuff like that. Yeah. Got and it. I consider the killer a dark comedy. So, like... If I could make up the genre, I would say, like, dark comedy thriller or yeah, something like that. Yeah, that would have helped a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> All right, whatever. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but yeah, 51 there. Not great. Yeah. But, you know, could have been worse. Where were you at? 40? 40. 40. Yep. I have I have another one for you. I did two. I did two. Oh. You told me to do two. I did? Yeah. Oh. Nice. Okay, yeah. well, I'll do I'll do this one. Okay. I'll, we'll let hit you back to back. Yeah. Um, what do you want to, what do you want to do? Um, let me pull up the categories again. All right. Um, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with the number of words and genre again. Okay. These are better, I think. Okay. More helpful. Genre. Sci-fi drama adventure. Okay. Anything. And <laughs> words in the title is one. 
sci-fi drama adventure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alien, I feel like, would definitely be horror. I feel like... Oh, there's so many things it could be. Give me the year. 2014. I'm going to take a guess, and it could be way off because I'm bad with years, but I think I know what it is. I'm going to go with Arrival. No. Fuck. So, what was the least year, year was Arrival? 12. Um, <coughs> we're in the titles 4, so that's 16. Uh, genre is 7, so that's 23. An incorrect guess is 5, so that's 28. Okay. Um, <coughs> what did you want to guess What next? year was Arrival? 2016. Fuck. You, pretty close for you, though. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't that bad. Yeah. Not sure if I'd consider Arrival Adventure, though. I mean, obviously, one of those three genres is not fully there. But like I would, I would say advent like adventure would never be there in in arrival like ever. Well, yeah. But the genres. What do you mean? Are, well, yeah, you you guessed it. Yeah, but I'm saying like obviously the genres don't line up like exactly. I wouldn't say that. <coughs> I'm sure there's some that are a little dumb, but like if it says adventure, I expect adventure in some capacity. All right, let me get. Let me look at the points again. I'm at how much now? You are at twenty six. No. Twenty three plus. I think twenty eight. Ooh, rough stuff here. Let me double check. <coughs> uh, more than title four. Genre seven. That's eleven. At least you're twenty three. Yeah, twenty three plus five, so eight twenty eight. The only other thing I can think of is like one of the big ones. It's going to be like 25. That's going to put me at 50. Mm-hmm. There's, some, it, there's it, some lower ones that could be helpful. Not for one me. One in specific I think would be very helpful. But I can't say. I don't think any of these would help me. Um, ooh. I'm going to look so stupid if this is the wrong year. Dune? Carl, you think Dune came out in 2014? Oh, shit, 2014. I forgot what year I had. <laughs> I thought it was like 2019. Okay. Well, that's five points. <laughs> oh, fuck. You're at thirty three. Nah, I think I give up. I don't. I, don't, I think don't you're gonna give get up. more than no. me. Give me lead actor then. Okay, the category that I feel like you should be guessing is your letterbox rating. Why are you not guessing that? I don't know what I have stuff rated at. Yeah, but there's one rating that would narrow it down to certain things. Is it five star. I don't know. You'll have to find out, but I just feel like with the options that you have, that would be a pretty, uh, pretty right, good fine. one. I guess I can't go any wrong. Do letterbox rating. Your letterbox rating is a five. Five. For a sci-fi adventure. Now you're at 38 points. And I saved you a ton of points not going with another thing. Because I'm a good friend. That's what I do. A sci-fi adventure drama. I think you're getting to the point now where you're going to be upset. Probably. That Give me lead you're actor. Not getting it, Carl. How are you not getting this? I don't know what. I don't know. <coughs> Sci-fi drama adventure. Mm-hmm. 2014. One word. 
I don't know. Five star. Carl. Hang on. I'll give you top build actor if you want, but you should be getting this. 2014. I feel like sci-fi is throwing me off because they do superhero movies as sci-fi. Is it The Dark Knight? No, no, it's one word. So it's none of the Batmans. Um, hey, give me top build actor. Matthew McConaughey. Oh, Jesus, Interstellar. <coughs> it's Interstellar. Lord. It's... <coughs> Perhaps your favorite movie. It is. <laughs> I didn't. I did not have Interstellar on the brain whatsoever. I thought that came out like earlier, or not earlier, but later on than that. That's so insane. I was worried that you were going to get it after one word and sci-fi drama adventure. Oh no, that's just like I was. I can kind of narrow it down with that because those are the only low categories that really helped me at all. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so you had 38, and then Matthew McConaughey was 25. Yeah. See, so you're the mathematician here. What is that? 63? 63. Mm. Wowzers. You got some big shoes to fill. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, so what's what's mine? <coughs> um, give me release year. 2021. 2021. I'm going to keep mine out so I can see the points. Yep. Um, 2021, give me my rating. Your letterbox store was a three and a half. 2021, three and a half. And give me words in the title. Three. So 2021, these aren't guesses, I'm just... Yeah, yeah, you're good. 2021 was Dune, Nomadland, Eternals, which I wouldn't give a three and a half because it fucking sucks. (laughs) Um, (coughs) No Time to Die, that's four words. Three words, 2021. Uh, I think Pig was that year. Oh, I got it. It's No Way Home. Nope. It's not No Way Home. Oh, that wouldn't be... That'd be four words. My stupid ass. (laughs) It's all right. Fuck. (laughs) I didn't think about the Spider-Man part. Yeah. But that's 2021. I have it at like a three and a half or a four. It almost met the criteria. And it's almost the right words. Fuck. Okay. Are you keeping track of my score? Yeah, I'm writing it down. Okay. 2021. Malignant, but that's one word. That was like the weird COVID year. Quiet Place Part 2 would be four words. Uh... Give me the genre. Let me look up and see if I did the right genre real quick. I just did like what just I thought. Go it was. to Letterboxd and That's what scroll I'm down, do. and it'll, it'll. There's a tab that says genres. Horror thriller. Hmm, that's helpful. Is it though? Yeah, it's pretty specific. Wouldn't be any of the X trilogy. That's 2022. Malignant's one word. Uh, 
black phone was 2022. I'm going to add up your score while I while okay. you think out loud here. Horror thriller. Oh, The Green Knight was 2021. By the way, that's not a guess because it's not a horror thriller, but... Um, God, this is hard. Yeah. What's my score? I'm still adding it up. You did the genre letterbox score. I need Words to in the title. Words in the title. And release year. Uh, 2021's a hard one because it was like the year after COVID and not a lot came out. So, 12, 16. Good. 23. You're at 35 points. Wow. I fucking suck. Not as bad as me, dude. You still have. You could still get a couple of the top picks and be okay. <laughs> Wait. So what's I have thirty five. Yeah. So if I guess director, I would be at sixty. Yes. So I'd still be under you. Yeah. Okay. Give me. Wait. Because I had sixty one, right? Director could fuck me though if it's like not a popular director. I think. Actor is probably safer. Give me top build actor. Um, Mason Thames. That's not good. <laughs> I feel like in hindsight, director may have helped me a little more. I can give you director for Ma- free. No, 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 don't do that. Mason Thames does ring a bell, though. Does so that put you at 60? You got one point to Wait. play with. I just had an idea, but it contradicts one of the clues you gave me. Oh, you have a brain blast? I thought that it was, come on, come on. But you said three words. I did. So you're not, that's not incorrect, right? Like, Are you guessing, come on, no, come on? No, like, you didn't pull some fuck shit. Right? No, like, no. My, like, my, the comma's actually the, a word or something. The... <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> I hope you lose now. Because Mason Thames, <laughs> that sounds so familiar. Like, he he's a kid. Like, I know, I'm pretty sure he was, like, a kid actor in something. So that's why I thought, come on, come on. I didn't know. I had to fucking look him up. That's so insane. That That's the top build actor. Fucking kiss my ass. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, director wouldn't have helped either. Dude, what At the least fuck I don't is think, this? I don't think it would have. What the fuck? <coughs> is this like this, is this supposed to be hard? Yeah. Okay. I picked this specifically because I forget that it exists. <laughs> I give it a three and a half. I I thought for a second it could have been Raya and the Last Dragon, but that's four words. And that would have explained me not knowing who the fuck <laughs> the actor is because it would be animated. <coughs> Dude. Horror thriller. Am I? I think I think what this is is that I have the year wrong and it's the black phone. Is that an official guess? That's yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's the black phone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you beat me by one point. <laughs> Beat you by yeah. three points. <laughs> oh, I got sixty-three. Yeah, Jesus, that's yeah. nuts. That was that was that was tough. I knew that. I knew Mason Thames. Like the second I heard that, I was like, that was a kid. Like I remember seeing a movie where that guy was a kid, and I thought he was really good. Dude, I thought for sure. Like I was like, if he guesses director. Oh, by the way, Scott Derrickson would have helped a lot. I know who Scott Derrickson is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I didn't know him. I don't I think I know him from anything other phone. than Black Phone. He did but... Sinister. And, oh, and that Dr. explains Sleep. it. And uh. Doctor Strange, for some reason. He did the first Doctor Strange? Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, 
But yeah, those were the two real reveals. So hell yeah! Shout out to Tyler Whitmore in the trivia ten because hell yeah, that's that was good stuff. Shit. Um, and then this was an idea that Evan gave us. Evan, where we combine the synopsis of two movies, and the person has to guess what two movies it is. Yeah. I feel like mine's pretty easy. I feel like mine was easy. Okay. Well, we shall see. I'll go ahead and read you mine first. Okay. Bald man hurls a chair at a kid's head until he creates an imaginary friend that helps him break free of corporate constraints of modern society. Well, (laughs) one of them is definitely whiplash. (laughs) What are you talking Um, about? (laughs) Um, That makes me think Fight Club and Whiplash, but that doesn't, like, match up. What do you mean? Like, I thought the whole point of the game was to do, like, uh, a quiet place beyond the pines where, like, they merge into each other. Yeah, I think you are supposed to do that. I just didn't. Oh, sick. (laughs) That's how this is. It's Whiplash and Fight Club. You're the coolest guy in the world. (laughs) (laughs) No wonder you came up with your shit so fast, dude. (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. All right, I forgot about the <laughs> element. That element of the okay, <laughs> we're on. To we're cooking now. <laughs> now I know why you were so confused. You're just freestyle. <laughs> I, I like it. I just cool. took two synopsis and mashed them together, and I forgot I gotcha. about the title having to. Correlate. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. We're, it's all good. We got there at the end. Yeah. All right. Awesome. <laughs> do you want me to do mine, or you want to do your next one? I have. That's my only one. Oh, I did two. I thought I was supposed to do two. All right. Um, two com- two competing criminals try to murder a child, but grow to become friends after realizing how much they, they love the kid. Two competing criminals try to murder a kid. Yeah. Keep in mind, these are two plots mixed together. Are they... Is it like one half in the second half or is the entire thing mixed together the entire thing's mixed together oh fuck well based on what you said this isn't like a points thing so I can just like ask yeah, questions and yeah. stuff this is just for goofs my first instinct was one of them's home alone is that this is when you say yes or no oh I didn't know if you were thinking alone. out loud yeah one of them is home alone say the whole thing again two competing criminals Try to murder a child, but grow to become friends after realizing how much they love the child. How much they both love the child. That sounds like Monsters, Inc., but that's not... <laughs> that wouldn't make sense. I did the titles thing. I don't know. That's what, that's what I'm saying. So, the second movie, either... It... It has home or alone in the title. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct on that one. I have a feeling that home alone is the second part and home is the end of the fr- of the other movie's title. Correct. Something ends in home. What ends in home? Uh, it's not that dog movie Logan wants me to watch, is it? No. Homeward, Homeward Bound. That's what it is. No, this is a this is a movie that uh, we're pretty fond of. <coughs> Ends in home. Am I fucking stupid? Do I have shit for brains? <laughs> I mean, kind of. Me mixing the whole thing is uh, was tough, but like them competing against each other and then becoming friends is the key parts to the the other movie. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> <coughs> this is rough. I can give you an actor in the other movie. That would probably make it too easy. I can give you the year of the other movie. Okay. Let me get it. Two 
2015. Daddy's Home Alone. Yep. Got it. That really? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. I'm autistic. <laughs> no. uh, you really you should not help me that much. <laughs> All right. Um, I got I got another one of those if you want to do it. Okay. Um, a young band member must survive zombie hordes if he ever wants to get a chance to earn the right to date his love. Say it again. <laughs> a young band member must survive zombie hordes if he ever wants to get a chance to earn the right to date his love. <coughs> band member made me instantly think Whiplash, but that <laughs> wouldn't make sense. That synopsis. I'm assuming that's. I'm correct. It's not. That's yeah, not it's not Whiplash. Whiplash yeah. Band member. Hordes of zombies. Man, this is... For some reason, like, what you're saying reminds me of an Edgar Wright movie. And I'm thinking, like, Scott Pilgrim or... Yep. That's one of them. Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim versus World War Z. Yep. Versus Scott the World War Z. Versus the World War Z. Got it. Hell yeah. Fucking nailed it. That's pretty awesome. Hell yeah. Now I know why it took you so long to get ready. Cause... <laughs> yeah, I was trying to do the right thing. Yeah. That's the first <laughs> You're time. You're trying to play the game properly. <laughs> that's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> yeah. I completely forgot about the title having to connect. I just yeah. took two movies and was like, yep. <laughs> you crushed it. This will work. <laughs> I like that these two. That will do, Donkey. <laughs> um, <coughs> all right. So that's it, right? Yeah, that's like okay. okay. For trivia and games, that's all we had. Um, what did you do? Your top ten? I did do my top ten. Okay, but we'll do watch list first. We'll save top ten for the last. All right. Um, not a ton on here. Only have three films. I've got one film and then one like rabbit hole that I went down that I would like to share a little okay. bit. Um, well, first up for me is pretend that you love me. Which was a recommendation by Adonis. Adonis? uh, Yep, the homie. And (coughs) I really liked it. It was the movie I was watching by Joel Haver. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know who that was. I just... This was just a movie someone told me to watch, so I watched it. But it's... I actually thought it was pretty fucking great. Really? What did you wind up giving it? I gave it a four. Ooh. I thought it was really fucking good. What's the kind of the synopsis? It seemed like when I walked in, you were watching it, it seemed like they were just kind of two people being like brutally honest with each other. Well, here's the thing. The movie kind of has a twist. Mm. Which is seems weird considering like what it is. Like if you look up the movie on Letterboxd and like it, it doesn't seem like a movie that would have a twist, but like it kind of does. And the movie is constantly, like, changing, changing what it is throughout. And you'll you'll turn it on, and you'll watch, like, 30 minutes, and you're like, okay, so this is what the movie is. Yeah. And then it'll change, and then it's like, oh, this is... Is it funny at all? Because I mainly know Joel because of his comedy stuff. Uh, it has, like, awkward comedy. Yeah, that's, that's like, what he does. Like, because he's playing this guy that's, like, a little awkward around girls, so there'll be funny things just because he, like... He's a weirdo. Yeah, because he can just be really awkward around them. But, like, there's not a lot of intentional, like, jokes really made. It's it's mainly just the awkward comedy stuff when he's on dates. But um, I can't really... I don't really feel good talking about what the movie's about. Because I feel like to do that, I have to spoil, like, the twist of the movie. But... Um, for me, I just thought it was like one of the most vulnerable movies I've ever watched. Oh man! In terms of like the filmmaker being extremely personal and it feeling like something that the <coughs> filmmaker really needed to make. It felt very personal to them, and like something that could 
feel very embarrassing to present to people. That's how I feel. Like, if I was a director that made this, I would feel really embarrassed to show it to people. I'd, I'd feel that way about kind of, like, when you think about it, anything like that, any kind of artistic thing that people do, I feel like it takes a lot of, like, balls to be able to put it out there. It does, but, like, to even a, a grander extent with this. Like, this is so... <coughs> like, I feel like you watch this, and then you look at the guy who made it, and you're like, holy fuck, dude. <laughs> like, are you all right? Is, like, is it like, what was it on? It's on YouTube. Just on his YouTube channel. Dude, I'm going to have to check this but out. But, avoiding spoilers... By the way, everyone watch it. I re- highly recommend it. I think it's really good. I just added it to the watch list. You should you should check it out for sure. Um, it's a movie that, like, it's not going to be for everybody. I know my buddy Will watched it and gave it a two. And maybe I can talk to him about that. Maybe I can convince him <laughs> so why it's better. Knock some sense into him. Um, but I think that the acting is really, really good. Like to where it it almost feels like it was just documentary like it it almost felt like they weren't actors and that they were just he just set up a camera in his life and so i thought the acting was really good the dialogue was like very natural and awkward like people talk how people talk in real life with like pauses and stutters and like it, it didn't ever feel like anyone was reading a script and the cinematography is actually really good too like there's some great shots in it and I noticed that about him, if like watching his videos, he had a couple, I think just like, I think he would do like yearly recap videos or like monthly recap videos. And it would be like him, like in the woods, like sitting on a log or something. Mm-hmm. And I would be like, dude, this is kind of like a sick angle. And it would cut at like random shots of him, like just talking about like his plants and the shit. Yeah. Like he'll, he'll, <coughs> he really knows how to like frame a nice shot when he, when he chooses to. So... Yeah, I don't I don't want to talk too much about it because it's something that's best if you just go in blind. Mm-hmm. But I think definitely give it a shot and I really enjoyed it and I'm interested in watching some other stuff he made now. Yeah. That's your shit too, the like slice of life stuff. Yeah. Which is really um natural feeling. I've never and I I will say like I've never seen a movie like this before. And like that's when you're watching something low budget like an indie movie like that's the highest praise like that's what I would want to hear if I made a short film or a a movie in general whether someone said it was good or bad like what I would want to hear is I've never seen anything like it because that means regardless I thought of something (laughs) like creative that no one's seen before yeah and like I can't do like in my head right now like Someone told me, hey, go make a movie like that no one's seen before. Yeah. Be like, dude, I don't fucking know. Yeah. I'm just, just make a re- sequel to the Batman. I don't know. Like <laughs> I'm it. just going to make Back to the Future, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like, <coughs> thinking of concepts for movies that haven't been done yet is really hard. Yeah. And I genuinely have never seen anything like this. And I, I recommend it to everybody. I think it's really fucking good. And it's on YouTube, so it's, it's free. Yeah. Um, and then the next day. I went to see the Batman in theaters. Hell yeah. I was supposed to go with my good pal. Yeah, I got fucked on that. That's what was supposed to happen. Yep. My good pal was supposed to go with me. Um, but he said he doesn't care about me, and <laughs> that's that's what happened. <laughs> no. I had it all worked out, and then my schedule got changed at the last second, and I was, like, sick. That's awesome. Yep. Uh... But I had to go alone, and it was an hour away. So when I said earlier that I listened to a the guys be a dudes episode, well, I was driving somewhere. That's what I was doing. I was driving to the Batman, and uh, this was fun. This was a, a fun thing because I went to a new theater that's an hour away that I had never been to before, and it's in a mall, and the mall's really nice. And, uh, it was just like the nicest theater I've ever been to. And I want to go back. And it's, it made me realize how like bare bones our Regal is. Yeah. I get our Regal that we go to is nice. Like 
um like the screens are nice and the well, sound some of them are nice yeah and <laughs> like the sound for the most part's good like sometimes you'll get in a theater that's too quiet but um like it's clean and everything it's it's fun and there's recliner chairs which is huge like I couldn't go to one of those old fashioned theaters that had like the stadium seats that yeah with like the carpet on them that it's like you have to push down to like sit in yeah I can't like I'm so far past that now I have back pain like I can't <laughs> so do spoiled. any of that yeah I have to I have to have a recliner seat so our Regal does have that but like this ain't this was an AMC so I had to pay for my ticket I had because I have Regal Unlimited so. I had to pay for an AMC ticket and that's the only place that was doing the Batman screening was AMC. And, um, yeah, it was a super fucking nice theater. They had murals on the wall everywhere. They had like a bunch of arcade games and, um, they were giving out posters, Batman posters and their drink station is like when you get a drink, they just hand you a cup oh, and then they a have a freestyle machine. Oh my God. And you can get whatever you want. And they have ICs, and their icy machine is on just out there that you can just fill up on your own. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. So not only do they have ICs, they had like Mountain Dew icy. Like they had a, a bunch of good ICs that you can get yourself. And if no one's looking, you can just pay for a normal drink and get an icy. Yeah. Because it's right next to it. No one gives a fuck. I mean, um, also, like, I take that as, like, you can get refills, like, whenever you want. Yeah, that, that's the point. Like, they wouldn't have it out there if you couldn't get refills. Yeah. I, maybe, like, if you get a small, you're not supposed to get a refill, but... It's out there. Like, it's out there. No one no one gives a fuck. Um, so, yeah, the theater was super nice, and uh, it was... I mean, it was my 10th watch of the Batman, so... Like, <laughs> I was just... Like, I, I don't have anything new to say about it. It's my favorite movie, and it's still my favorite movie, and I, I think it's fucking perfect. Um, I don't I don't know. Like I don't I don't know what, what to say <laughs> yeah. about it. Like, if you're a scooper, you know how much I love the Batman, and eventually we'll have to do a like a full episode on the Batman, like a a long, extended breakdown. Yeah. There's but really, um, there's a lot of movies I could do that with. Yeah. It's just, sometimes it can be hard, like, it, like it's intimidating to make a podcast episode on one movie. Yeah. It's hard for me to describe, like, why something's awesome. I'll just tell someone it's awesome. Yeah. I like, dude, it was just so fucking good. I feel like when I do a breakdown <coughs> for one movie, I end up just, <coughs> like, quoting it. Like, yeah. just going through step by step, like, what happens in the movie, and then quoting it. And that's it. Yeah. And like, like I, I think our Dune 2 episode was just us quoting Dune 2 like Dude. the whole time. But that, that, I get so fucking rock hard talking about Dune yeah. 2, dude. Um, but yeah, there was a, there was a penguin sneak peek at the end of it and like, they didn't really show anything like new, like that new or interesting or anything like it was. If you were going just for the penguin sneak peek, then you were probably disappointed. But like that wasn't why I was going. Yeah. I th like I thought about just leaving because I was like, this is going <coughs> to be on YouTube in like two days. So I, I like, it was just a six minute like behind the scenes thing with like a couple interviews and talking about the penguin. They they didn't really say anything new, but um, but yeah, it was fucking awesome. I loved seeing the Batmobile chase again in theaters and hearing the fucking engine rev up. Oh, dude. The Dude, I still, I still don't know, uh, when he, when his car fucks up, was that, what was that? Like, was that on accident? I think, yeah, I think it was an, an accident. I think it was his engine stalling and it's just like, you know, showing that he's not really been doing this for a long time. So why does your engine stall? I don't know about cars. I don't, I don't what does that That's mean? a custom built fucking jet engine, dude. I don't know shit about that. Something's off about it. Yeah, I don't know. But it does it's seem like... It's always just a little... It always feels a little weird when it happens. It feels weird, too, because it seems like any time he's in the uh, cave, like, he's working on the car. He's, like, never working on the car once in the movie. What's well, always, like, right beside... Like, it looks like he's been building it for, like, a really long time. Like, it seems like if it's at that stage where it's spitting out fire and 
you've got a custom jet engine in it that it's gonna like work. I just don't know about cars, so I don't know what stalling out is and what causes it. Like I just, I just don't know. I think it was in there just to show that he's still like getting the hang of everything. Yeah, but like he's still learning. Like I could have done without it though. Yeah, like, just I don't know because that <laughs> scene is so badass of like hearing the engine rev up and everyone looking over at it and like the silhouette of the blue like God, flame yeah, coming out of the back of it and then it stalls out and it's like ah <laughs> like, it's, it's pulling fun, my pud dude yeah um but yeah it's i mean i've i've talked about the batman enough i guess i don't really have anything to say but i'm happy that my 10th watch was in theaters and anytime it gets released in theaters, I'm going to go back. Hell yeah. Um, and then my last one is Triangle of Sadness. Which was recommended by Alan. I gave it a three star. I wasn't that big on it. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought people love Triangle of Sadness. They do. They what do. the hell happened? Um, it has a 3.7 average. And like most of my friends list are fours. It's, uh, well, first of all, is it everyone like a, always um, said it was funny. Everyone always, that was like the go-to thing was that it was really funny. <coughs> and I didn't find it very funny. Ooh. So that's step, you know, step A. Numero uno. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, of the problems. Like, I didn't it's, think it's a, it was a, It's a, like a, not dark comedy, I guess kind of, but like, like a min, the menu type comedy. Oh, but yeah, yeah. Not funny. So... Awesome. That's an issue. Cool stuff. Um, <coughs> I really like Harris Dickinson, and the cast really good. But it just felt a little, like, on the nose and a little, like, the commentary was a little basic mm-hmm. and, like, didn't really do anything interesting. It's just, like, an Eat the Rich movie. Oh, gotcha. But, like, not really with anything new that I haven't seen before. So I thought that, like... Like, it's okay for movies to have very simple themes and commentary, but when it seems like the point of your movie is to have, like, social commentary, and then it's not very good, like, that's kind of an issue. Yeah. Like, I don't care about the social commentary in Toy Story, but in Triangle of Sadness, it feels like that's kind of the point, is, like, it's it's an eat-the-rich dark comedy, but it doesn't have good commentary, and it's not funny, so it's kind of missing both the things that it set out to do. Yeah. I kind of, when you're, I feel like when you're doing big social commentary in your movie, I feel like the only way to really do it in an interesting way is to like frame it in a perspective that you don't typically think of. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's the only way that it, I kind of like, Oh, you know, I never thought of it like that. That's the only time it really works for me. Yeah. Like parasite. Yeah. When, Parasite's um, a, a great one. When it rains and then uh, the people, the rich people who live on the elevated part of the city, they're like, oh, and look how, look how green the grass is because of all that beautiful rain yesterday. Yeah. And then that rain is flooded the poor people's apartment because they live down beneath them and the rain trickles down and flooded their entire... So yeah. the same event was catastrophic and horrible for one group of people and was was just something like something nice and pleasant for the other people yeah like that's commentary yeah that's that's That's, how you do it that's a great example of like i never thought about anything like that like i never thought of it through that lens of like something you know minute to them that they see as like oh could be life-changing for someone else yeah um that's that. That's exactly like what I mean. When you're doing a movie about social commentary, telling it in a perspective that makes you really like, oh, you know, I, I didn't think about it like that. That's the only time. Because any other time you just you're direct about it, I feel like it just comes off ha- heavy handed, and you almost, I almost start rooting against, like the narrative that they're painting when they try to do like that. Yeah, it was just very like heavy handed and very obvious and not super like fresh or anything it was it was all the same stuff i've seen before with the eat the rich movies so 
Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't huge on it, but it's fun. I didn't have like a horrible time watching it, but I'm kind of surprised that people loved it as much as they did. Dang. I didn't even know it was a comedy. I thought it was like a more serious movie. Maybe I maybe I'm wrong and like it's not like people don't mainly see it as a comedy. On Letterboxd, it says drama comedy. That's so, definitely supposed to be funny, then. Um, <coughs> but, yeah, it does kind of surprise me. Because I can't really think of, like, a single moment that I thought was... Eh. Harris Dickinson's really good, and... Um, let me make sure that's who it is. I mean, I'm pretty sure, but... I don't want to keep fucking up his name if that's not him. That's the guy from... Um, yeah, the Iron Claw. Yeah. Yeah, it's him. Um... He plays a guy named Carl. <laughs> the best movie ever. Yeah. Um, the best looking Carl of all time. <laughs> Fuck him for making that the... Raising the Carl standards. Yeah, <laughs> it was already old man Arnold from fucking Terminator, and now yeah. it's fucking him? I gotta be 6'6 six, six yeah, and your competition as hell? In the old Carl games. Jesus Christ, dude. Um, But it does do a good... It's split into three acts, and like that was one strength of the movie, is that it, like... The second it starts to get a little stale, the act changes and it's like something new. Uh, so that was pretty cool. <coughs> and I liked the, um, I I think my favorite section was actually the first. Really? Yeah. What's kind of the idea behind it? Well, I've never seen the trailer, so I don't know what is like a spoiler and what's not. I haven't read seen the synopsis. A celebrity model couple are invited on a luxury cruise for the uber rich, helmed by an unhinged alcoholic captain. What first appears Instagrammable ends catastrophically, leaving the survivors stranded on a desert island in a struggle of hierarchy. Okay, so they they do they do show that in the trailer. Um, the first act is the model couple meeting. And then the second act is them on the cruise. And then the third act is their cruise ship getting attacked by terrorists and them getting in a lifeboat and floating to a abandoned island. Sounds like they're doing like a Lord of the Flies thing. That's kind of what they do. Like they... I guess like minor spoilers for Triangle of Sadness. Not really. It's not like a death or anything. But in the third act when they get to the island, all the rich people have no survival skills and don't know how to survive. And then the cleaning lady who they like kind of belittled earlier in the movie, like knows how to start a fire and how to gather food. And like, they all start like worshiping her and treating her. And like, she gets this like huge ego and goes on a power trip because she's finally like getting respected by people. So it's like pretty, obvious stuff that they're doing like the second that the rich people don't like their money doesn't mean anything anymore like they're they're, they're used to just throwing money at any problem that they have and now that they're stuck on this island and money it doesn't mean anything now they're all idiots yeah and and uh and then they look up to the cleaning lady now to like for survival it's all just like it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. It's not very interesting to me. Um but yeah, that's the concept. I just she didn't think it was very funny. Yeah. Doesn't sound like anything I would be too thrilled about, but I'll add it to the watch list maybe maybe I'll get a few. And they got a criterion, which I mean I guess doesn't surprise me because they they do pick some horse shit sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So like uh like Badlands. Yeah, like Badlands and Straw Dogs. Yeah, Stray Dogs. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're yeah. off your rocker. Well. <laughs> but that's that was my last uh, watch list item. My watch list, I um, got a little nuts. Two whole things. Um, <laughs> no, I watched. Uh, I watched Chronos. You watched what? Chronos. Oh, Guillermo. Del motherfucking Toro. When your best Del Toro watches Guillermo without you. Del Toro actually in English means the big penis. In case you're wondering. 
that's that's Guillermo's last name. It's Guillermo the Big Penis. But you no, know, Kronos was pretty fucking cool. I didn't realize it was what it was. If that makes sense, like it's a very it's in a very specific subgenre of movie, and I didn't realize that when I was going into it. I had basically no knowledge of it. Mm-hmm. <coughs> but were you going to say something? No, I was just going to say I know of Kronos, and I know it was Guillermo's, like, I think it's in this weird, people kind of call it like an unofficial trilogy. Like, they aren't connected at all, but mm-hmm. people kind of put... Kronos and the Devil's Backbone and Pan's Labyrinth in a like trilogy, like a '90s horror trilogy. Oh, not nine. Well, Pan's Labyrinth isn't, uh, isn't '90s, but like, it's sort of this like unofficial horror trilogy by Guillermo. And I think, I think there's a Criterion release called like the Guillermo del Toro Horror Trilogy, and it's like those three movies. Oh dang. Yeah, but I don't know anything about it. Um, I mean, I try to not learn things about movies that I know I want to watch. Oh yeah, it's like yeah, same here. Because like, why? If you want to watch it anyways, why learn what it's about? Yeah. So, um, what what it was is like what I didn't realize it was. It's a very unique version of what it is of what it's like an adaptation of something. Not necessarily. There's just like um. I'm trying to think of an example. Like, if you know someone's doing, like, a war movie, you have a very specific idea of, like, what it's going to entail. Mm. Um, and that's kind of like how this is once you realize what's going on. You don't realize till the very end, like, the full extent of what the fuck is happening. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but um, once you do, you're like, holy shit. That's kind of crazy. That's, pretty that's awesome. the direction that he went. Yeah, and then... The visuals of stuff is obviously really good. It's Guillermo. Um, Ron Perlman's in it. Hell yeah, I'm in. And it, he's just, dude. That's one fine motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, tell you right now, he looks fucking crazy in this movie. No way, Ron Perlman looks crazy? <laughs> no, dude. It's, <laughs> it's way more... You know that picture that I always show you of Vin Diesel with hair? Yeah. It's that, but Ron Perlman. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, dude. Without the Mark Sinclair treatment. <laughs> it's so crazy. Oh, God. Um, but um, I, I thought it was... I thought it was really cool. It wasn't... It's not scary, but obviously there's horror elements of stuff. Yeah. And um, the mystique of everything. Of, like, what the fuck's going on? Um, you know, where is this going to end up? Was really cool. And there's some really cool visuals that he does um, with this, like, gadget, this, like, trinket. Um, mm-hmm. Without spoiling anything, that's that's probably all I'll say. But I, I really, really need it. to dive deeper into, into Guillermo's filmography. I want to. After Kronos, I was like, dude. I want to see The Devil's Backbone. <coughs> I want to rewatch Pans. Yeah. I haven't seen Pans in a long time. I, I, I need to see The Shape of Water. I know that's, like... Some people will love it. Some people hate it. And there's a chance I won't like it, but I feel it like was people... like, it is a Guillermo movie that was nominated for best picture. So like yeah. there has to be something there. That's like, well, I think the shape of water gets made fun of unjustly. It's I not think like people, people probably like, just think the concept's goofy and that's not what that, it is. Not that he did something wrong. Yeah. People are like, Oh, that's the movie where uh, the chick bangs a fish. And it's like, you know, maybe, but is it good? But yeah, like you can do that with a lot of movies. Like, oh, is that the <laughs> movie where the kid learns how to drum? Yeah. It's like, well, sure, I guess. That's, I mean, if, yeah, that's <laughs> like, okay, but it's really fucking good. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I you f- can make any movie sound dumb. I haven't heard anyone say like a negative thing about The Shape of Water and been like, oh, the pacing's bad. Yeah. Or, oh, the characters suck. And like, like anything like It's always like, she bangs a fish and then they they do whatever and like like okay yeah I don't want a synopsis what do you think <laughs> yeah yeah <coughs> people are like really like casual people are really bad at analyzing movies yeah and like Guillermo does weird shit and I like it yeah I want him to do weird shit like I was talking about this with like a friend of mine recently and people who don't watch movies 
when you ask them what they thought of a movie or like you walk out of a movie together like their criticisms are like 99 percent of the time like logic issues like if you walk out of the batman and you're like yeah so what'd you think they'll say like oh well how did he not die when that bomb went off right in his face like those people who love movies don't care about stuff like that yeah those are logical like you're trying to put reality into fiction yeah like the, those those things don't matter what matters to people who like movies are story issues character issues filmmaking issues like if something just looks bad if acting's bad yeah if the sound's bad if the pacing's bad like things that actually matter and it's like the comment we talked about with the guy that said the iron was too much in x x2 like yeah. the guy got injected with too much iron and it's like dude why are you trying to like ground these movies into reality and it's like sometimes depending on the movie i guess there is like some room to criticize stuff for being unrealistic like if if there's something like manchester by the sea and like something really dumb happens it's like i guess like you can but that's the thing like, that's a really be, normal basic standard movie yeah but it's got to be like really dumb yeah like but then some people also don't understand like visual storytelling and um like in birdman like that's a that's a pretty like grounded movie but then it has these elements that are like fictional because it's representing his mind state yeah and if you watch that with an idiot he'll be like dude why the fuck was he floating yeah like, yeah <laughs> it, like those are the things people have issues with when they don't like understand movies and i know that sounds kind of like a dick thing to say but no because i like it makes me mad when people will latch on to like tiny things and it's like like dude who gives a fuck yeah like, you have to break the rules pretty big for me to notice stuff like that or you you have to muddle someone's motivation like a character's motivation you have to break the rules of the of the world that you created or yeah. like just do something that really stands out of like now this and this doesn't make sense because you did this yeah yeah um it this all came up because i was talking on twitter about the batman and said like i to this day, I still can't really think of a flaw with the Batman. Like, if I can, it's it's a nitpick. It's, people it's talk a, about an actual the, flaw. Oh, these many, many people died in the car chase. Yeah. So I said I can't find a single flaw, and then um, someone commented, like some guy I don't know commented on it and was like, "Really?" with like a laughing face. Like, obviously, there's so many flaws with it. And I was like, "Okay, what flaws are there? Like, what am I missing?" And all he listed off was logical errors, like, like. Well, he got shot in the scene where the, uh, in the iceberg lounge, the gun f muzzle flares like light up the scene yeah. where they're all shooting him. It's like he got shot like with two hundred bullets. Like no, no armor can protect for that long, and they didn't even aim at the at the empty spot in his mask where they could have killed him. I was like, okay, well, first of all, that's every Batman movie. That's you can't prevent that. Yeah. Um, but I was like, dude, those are all just like, you like logical errors those aren't real problems yeah and he's not going up against dead shot dude when you're shooting someone you're just shooting at someone yeah um i was like <laughs> i don't care that the movie about a guy that dresses up as a bat he gets shot too many times yeah this is fiction like th it's not real it's like i don't i don't give a fuck about shit like that i care about and he doesn't tell you what his fucking armor is made of. You just know that there's armor. I care about in Batman Begins when Batman lets Ra's al Ghul die because he says he's not going to kill him, but he doesn't have to save him either. That's a flaw to me because it's a character flaw. It's, yeah. it's a flaw within the story of the movie because yeah. Batman has a no-kill rule and then he's doing something that is killing someone. Yeah, and That's his it. whole thing is like he's they set everyone up in else the movie is okay not like turning the other cheek or turning the other way when bad shit's happening and he's not going to do that. Yeah. So he's kind of doing both things wrong. I'm a big don't break the rules that you set up in your movie. Exactly. If you said one thing in your movie, stick to it and don't break it. Yeah. And Batman Begins doesn't do that in that scene and that's why I think it's a flaw to me and 
Like, that's something that bothers me. Um, but people, like, I was like, dude, you, you didn't list off, like, a single actual flaw. Those are just, like, movies are fake, and there's going to be things that don't, like, that aren't super realistic. Yeah, you can, if that's the case, then there is no perfect movie. Yeah. Like, whatever his favorite movie is, I you could tear it apart. If yeah, guess what? The thinking. wingsuit that he has in the Batman, that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. You can't just randomly, like, <laughs> grow wingsuits. Wingsuits do head. exist, but they they can't be concealed in nothing. Like, that, yeah. that wingsuit came out of nowhere. I still, to this day, don't know where that wingsuit came from. Yeah. It's just, like, in his suit somewhere. Like, wingsuits are huge, and you, like, there's only one form. Like, yeah. it's just a expanded, big, dumb-looking wingsuit. Yeah. And it only looks normal once you jump off a, a cliff and, like, start flying in it. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you're watching a Batman movie and you're and you're concerned about the realism? Yeah. It's like, it would have to be Bruce Wayne, like, no, no bat gear or anything, no suit, just Bruce Wayne getting shot point blank in the head with a with a revolver and then surviving for me to be like what the fuck yeah that's what i'm saying like it would have to be something very very absurd yeah and that just doesn't happen because they also do even in the batman like they scale the amount of damage he takes like he gets shot a lot by small caliber bullets but at the end when he gets shot with a 12 gauge shotgun point blank it blows him back it fucks him up because yeah. like his armor isn't rated for a point blank 12 gauge shotgun run like they even know their shit there like yeah. he's getting hit with probably nine millimeter bullets and like 308 at the biggest yeah and then a 12 gauge point blank and it actually like hits him and fucks him up yeah i appreciate that yeah but i'm not gonna sit there and, and be like well, well come on he got shot with a pistol and then he takes a point blank <laughs> yeah. range fucking and shotgun shell to the face i think the reason i'm so hard <laughs> on that type of criticism is because I remember when that's like the type of criticism I had for movies. Like when I first started watching or when I was a kid and I would watch like an action movie, like that was the number one thing like casual moviegoers will say after they walk out of a movie, like an action movie, they'll say, how did that guy not die? Like he got shot eight times and didn't die. Or like he fell off a, a cliff and didn't die. It's like, what's a movie? That's why. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if I ever did that. Like, it's just such a basic, like, it thing is. people complain about. I don't think I've I've ever done that unless it was something that, like, really stood out to me, though. I'm, like, because that just, it's like, why, why aren't you, why are you trying not to have fun? Yeah. Like, people do that when they're, like, trying to guess the mystery and the, like, in movies. Like, why are you trying, like, you're trying to take the fun out of it. Like, just, yeah. just chill. And that's, like, that's sort of the whole idea with people fly finding plot holes, too. Like, I feel like a lot of times you have to be trying to find plot holes to for things to bother you. Like, someone, I think we talked about it when we talked about BVS, but someone said, like, well, why was Clark the one that had to carry the spear to kill Doomsday? Oh, like, I said that. I yeah. was like, I could, like, go into, like, them saying uh, Kryptonite was super radioactive and then fucking four different characters that are human touch it with their bare hands. Yeah. And then... Clark flies the spear in. Like, I don't give a fuck about all that. I care about them killing Jimmy Olsen immediately. I care about fucking Batman's motivation. Yeah, because that's motivation. a story. Like, that's a yeah. story issue. Exactly. And it's and it's also just, like, your opinion, too. Like, because you love Superman and you want to see, like, Jimmy Olsen in the movie. Like, exactly. Portrayed well. So that's just your... Like, I don't want to see Batman kill people. Like, technically, on paper, it's not a flaw. Like, it's not an objective thing. It's just something I don't like. Yeah, like, I don't want Batman to kill people, so I'm yeah. gonna say that. It's and more just like just you like, don't want Jimmy Olsen to be killed in the first scene after being like. It's also after, why introduce a character like Jimmy Olsen? Like, why have such a big person in the Superman mythos? Be Dude, just that character being fodder? Jimmy Olsen changed nothing. Yeah, that's what I'm that saying. Could have been like, anybody, it has no impact on the movie. So why would you even make it Jimmy Olsen? I think maybe Zack Snyder just hates Jimmy Olsen. That could be. Maybe he it's didn't put him in Man of Steel and then put him in BVS for five minutes before getting shot in the head. Yeah, I don't know. So. And then like, <clears throat> like all that stuff, I like I don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like I saw someone new a new complaint I've seen with the Batman is, 
um, that Batman's a bad detective. And um, why didn't he look at the place where the pictures of the the mayor and the penguin and the lady he beat up why didn't they go to where that picture was taken from that was the iceberg lounge no where the picture was taken like where the person was standing when they took the picture i don't think he like i would have done that well i would have never even thought about like, that like i in theory like i get what they're saying if you look at a picture with like with the technology Batman ha has, he can probably like plug it in and like see where the picture. How do was we taken even from. know that he took that picture from the apartment that he was at? Because his apartment's across from the Iceberg Lounge. Yeah, but I don't know what kind of view he has from his specific apartment. It could have been anywhere on that apartment no, has... rooftop. Well, later in the movie, he's sitting in his in his apartment with a sniper, and he shoots Falcone. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he took the picture there. That's well, that's implied. Like that's where exactly where his apartment is. I don't know. I don't know. And that's give a exactly fuck about the that, angle dude. that the picture was taken from. Like I get what they're saying, but like you have to really be thinking hard about trying to find a flaw to think of something like that. Yeah. Like I I've seen the movie ten times and I never once thought that. So that's not an, a flaw to me. That's just nitpicking. That's just like also they Matt, Matt Reeves makes it very clear that the Batman isn't the world's greatest detective yet. Yeah. This is year two and he's still learning and he's, he makes mistakes. Yeah. Like there's a whole hour of the movie where he's saying rat with wings and like not understanding the riddle that the Riddler gave him. Oh, he just, he fucks up a lot, dude. His fighting. That's kind of the whole, that's ha half the reason <laughs> I love the movie so yeah. much is that he's not some perfect character. Like he's, He's a human and he's learning just like us. And he's a badass and he'll beat the fuck out of you. Yeah. But he's not perfect. Yeah. He, I mean, his his fighting style is very, like... Brawler. Brawler, type. doesn't give a fuck about himself. Um, he Like, even him going to Falcone's, like, three times, he comes, like, once mm -hmm. as Batman and, like, busts his way in. He comes again as Bruce Wayne, like... He sneaks in once in his like drifter gear. Yeah, he goes he, like he sneaks in. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's actively learning from himself, like keeping a journal, learning from his mistakes, and like doing stuff like that. So like, yeah, he's not gonna be the world's greatest detective yet because that's not the point that he's at in his career. The whole point of the movie was proving that he was wrong. Yeah, like he starts the movie as vengeance and realizes that he's inspiring all these psychos. Yeah. By by portraying vengeance and that he needs to become more and that when the movie starts, he beats the fuck out of all those guys to save that little Asian guy, and then the Asian guy doesn't even know that like like he's terrified of Batman. Like he doesn't know that he's a good guy. Yeah. He just knows that that's the guy that just beat up ten, He thinks ten he's dudes. still in danger. Yeah, he, he doesn't know like Batman was there to like help him. And then at the end of the movie once he starts to become like a beacon of hope then the the girl in the in the getting airlifted won't doesn't want to let go of him yeah because she feels protected by him yeah like that was the whole point of the movie was that he was wrong like if you're finding flaws with him being wrong you're just not going to like the batman because yeah. that's literally the whole point yeah he's new and he's still learning what being batman is yeah so him being who he is like is why the Riddler was doing what he was doing. Yeah. So I, like I said, I don't know. Like I feel like you've got to be one of those types of people that just doesn't like having fun to like pick up on stuff like that and have it ruin the movie for you. Yeah. Like no way you think that's actually a f like that's something funny to like bring up as a nitpick. Yeah, like, like it, Lord of the Rings like, when they're how like come they didn't check they fly the in on the was taken from. Yeah, on they fly in on the big birds or like why didn't they just fly on the birds in the first place? Yeah. Like it's something you can look at and laugh at, but like I don't give a fuck, dude. It's, I want to watch Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I want to see Sam Wise. I had never get actually heard that before. Bread. What? Why didn't they fly in on the birds in the first place? Oh, yeah. Is there like a canonical reason or I don't fucking know. I don't. I've never looked into it. I just heard people say. I should that. ask my Lord of the Rings friends and see if they know. Yeah, I've never looked into it because I don't give a shit. 
it doesn't detract from the movies yeah. for me. I don't, I don't care. Dude, I'm so, like, brain dead when it comes to plot holes when I'm watching a movie. Like, I don't think about anything like that. Like, I just take in the movie that they give me. I don't think about what ifs. Like, it's just not the way I'm wired. Yeah, that's it would have how to be, I am. It would have to be, like, a tenth watch of something. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, how come they didn't do this? Yeah. But it would have to come naturally, not me trying to think of it. I think the last time I came close to doing something like that was like a quiet place. And I was just like frustrated with what was happening in the movie. Cause I was like, I would have definitely noticed that her hearing aid was fucking with those things. Yeah. But in reality, I would have never noticed it. Yeah. I would have, I would have done the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a really lame way to like try and put a movie down. Yeah. It's just not like, like imagine you spend all that time making a movie and after writing the script and like storyboarding it and preparing the sets and shooting it and editing it and getting the sound mixing and like all that stuff. And then someone watches it and you're like, yeah, but that guy should have died. Yeah. It's Actually like, the sun was 47 degrees North, which means it was four Oh seven. And they got to the next city at four Oh four thirty. How did they make that travel time? And, and with that sun, direction? actually they said that there was five minutes left on the bomb, but then the next scene took place over 20 minutes. Yeah, dude, like, how about eat a dick, dude? What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Like, <coughs> if you have a problem with my movie, it should be about, like, oh, I didn't like this character. Or, oh, like, this motivation was weird. I didn't know, like, what they even wanted out of yeah. this. And, like, it should be stuff like that. Not and even then, like, the motivation, ears. like, I know your big thing is Batman shouldn't kill. Like, in BVS, he's killing people, but, like, that's the character they created. And, like, I accept that. That's what they created. Well, listen, BVS is a five-star for me, so I it's not a deal breaker like my perfect batman movie would not have batman killing yeah but I'm and saying... i think that bvs just didn't show and like didn't set it up well enough well i'm saying like it's a problem for you in batman begins because of how the character is created like has out so oh up. right you're saying in bvs bvs doesn't break its own rules exactly BBS that's what i'm starts... saying yeah. With him killing people. Yeah. You pull that out of Batman Begins because it doesn't make sense based on his character, the way his character is presented in that movie. Yeah. And BVS, we kind of understand where his character is coming from, and it's established that that's how he is. Yeah. If you're a traditional Batman fan, you may dislike it, but in the movie they set up, they don't break any rules. Yeah. Like they, and they even layer in conversations with Alfred about how, uh, if you, and if you pay attention to the Robin suit in his Batcave, like, the Joker killed Robin, and that's what started this whole chain of him yeah. going on this rampage. BVS is probably the the biggest one that I could like find plot holes and and logic problems with. Mm -hmm. But it's a fucking superhero movie, which honestly you can use the same logic for Man of Steel. A lot of the problems we both have, but specifically you with Man of Steel, are preconceived things that you want out of a Superman movie and not necessarily things that the movie is doing wrong like within the rules it sets up yeah Wait, and that's not like invalid like that's a, still a fair criticism if you love a character you want to see them done right yeah but, I think that's that's kind of but it is kind of the same thing yeah it is a, a bit dicey because of it being such a ingrained in pop culture character but typically in movies like how characters portrayed is like okay it makes sense and then as, as long as you don't make a decision that goes against that the way it's, he's portrayed then like you're fine yeah yep I think you're right but yeah no shit like that pisses me off I'm like dude yeah. how about relax watch the movie have a good time <laughs> yeah that's that's insane it, like specifically for comic book movies like what are we doing yeah like well, actually, Black Adam, fucking, he would never be I, able to kill Dr. Fate. Dude, like, I feel what? like a lot of people probably hate on BBS because they're like, Superman could just laser through Batman's head in a second and then be done. Yeah. The movie would be over. I'm like, yeah. listen, dude, I'm a big Superman guy. I know he could definitely do that, but that's dude, not going to happen. That's, that's actually, I was about to bring that up. There's a video of Bruce Campbell doing an interview talking about BBS, and he was like, uh, you know they made a movie about Batman and Superman fighting? He's like, how dumb is that? He's like, that would never be a fight. Like, Superman can just blow his head off with, with laser vision and it'd be over. And 
and I was like, okay, um, and he goes on a on a rant about like how that would never be an even fight, and I was like, okay, you misunderstand the movie, which a lot of people do, I guess, because that's a common criticism of like how would Batman beat Superman? Yeah. Um, let me put this plainly. Superman is not trying to murder Batman. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to fight him. Yeah. If you and your he's brothers not even fight, trying to, he's not even you're not trying, trying to, fight to him. kill each other. You're just fighting. Yeah, he's not even trying to fight him. Superman is in the defensive in this fight. Yeah. Batman's the one trying to kill Superman, but Superman isn't trying to kill Batman. Yeah. He's just trying to defend himself and and sway Batman in the other direction. Yeah. He's not trying to kill him. So if you actually watch the movie and pay attention, that's the answer. Yeah. Now, if you, if it was a separate storyline and like Superman was evil and we had Batman fighting an evil Superman, might get a shit clapped. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be honest. There is like a lot of people defend like, oh well, no one beats Batman with prep time. I don't know if I've read enough comics to say that for sure. It it seems a little like you're telling me Doctor Manhattan can't beat Batman with with prep time, like. I, I'm not. I'm not too sure about that. He can just turn you into dust, yeah. no matter what you do. like. I, I don't. As the biggest Batman fan, like I don't know if that's true. I, I, I think that there's people that could probably beat him with prep time. I I think Superman could definitely fucking beat him, but I don't think there's ever been a time where Superman and Batman have fought full fledged without some kind of catch or intervening. Yeah, they're friends. Exactly. Like, so it's and always like they're both oh, inherently good. He's under mind control, so I'm gonna pull my punches or uh oh, you know, break it up, you two. We got this guy to look at. It's always yeah. it's always shit like that. They I don't think they've ever Wait, and it should be. Yeah, like, exactly. These are it's not hero villain. It's it's hero hero. Yeah. So they fight, yes, but they're not trying to. I do to need kill to read other. Doomsday Clock though. A little mm. Superman versus Manhattan action. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, dude. I'm in. Yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> I don't know. Up. I don't know what it is. I just know it's it's has something to do with. You think Manhattan's cocks out when he fights? I mean, yeah, dude. I hope so. No way you put that up. If before I you fight, if I got to Manhattan, and he was trying to fight me, and he had pants on. I'd be like, dude, no. What do you think I came here for? <laughs> I would. I'd be like, I'll see you tomorrow when you're actually dude, fucking ready. Greco Roman style. Right, <laughs> yeah, take <laughs> your pants off. Stop being gay. <laughs> Like our ancestors. Yeah, get fucking naked, dude. We're not doing this like gentlemen. We're going to be men. Yeah. If you feel a hand on it, it's not me, all right? This is, these are the old techniques, dude. <laughs> this is... Dude, this is the way Pa Kent told me, okay? I don't I don't know what you want from me. This is how we do it on Krypton, dude. <laughs> he just starts beating him off. This is a cheek hold. <laughs> Where are you going to go now? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta use two hands on this one. It's <laughs> massive, but this is what we do on Krypton. I, right, I just to you. make it just to make it extra fair. I'm gonna spit on it a little bit. <laughs> that, way, that way, it's harder to grip. I don't want it to be. I don't want to win too fast. Oh, all right. Last. <coughs> um, we are going to try to guess each other's top ten. Yep. And this is just like. Top 10s change a lot. Like, this is just as of now my top 10. Yeah, don't get too up in arms if it's like, I don't know if this is exactly my top 10. Like yeah, it's... I don't even have like an official number one movie. Yeah, you don't. Like, I have an answer that I give people just because people are like, how could you not have a favorite? But like, there's so many movies that I love that I think that I have at five stars that are like special to me. And like, I, don't, I didn't even put my movies in like an order, like one to 10. I just did. 10 movies that I have like perfect scores on that I love and that I can watch whenever yeah. and like that's it. I don't have any, I mean, I do have a ranking on my letterbox, but like this, I wasn't. Yeah. It's just it, like literally the next tomorrow could be completely different. I could be like, nah, yeah. it's these, but we're going to get 10 guesses each and see how many of them we can get. Cause like, obviously if we got unlimited guesses, we could probably figure out most of them. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the game. Try to see if you can get the higher score on only 10 guesses. So, We'll alternate. Um, I'll start with my guess. Okay. I'm going to assume Rocky's on there. Rocky is on there. Okay. Uh, I'll do a guess. Okay. I'm going to assume the Batman's on there. Uh, nope. 
What? Try again. <laughs> oh my god. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah. Um Mad Max Fury Road. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna go American Psycho. It is on there. Yep. That's my number nine. Ooh. So it's on there. Bring it back up. Like towards the bottom. Yeah. I've got some good shit above it, so <laughs> I'm just saying. <coughs> oh, I need to guess. Yeah, it's your, your, your um guess. The Dark Knight. Nope. That's false. That that's false. It's not on there. I'm saying it should be. It's not on there. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with Dune Two. Dune Two is on there. Yep. This one might not be on there, and if it's not, I feel like you perhaps might be a phony. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Moon. Moon's not on there. So you're a phony. Moon's not in my top 10. I don't think I would put it in my top 10. It's like a movie that you bring up all the time. You have it in your top four on Letterboxd. I just put movies on there that I like on my top four. Oh, so you're, like I was saying, like you're a phony. I don't do genuine, like... I didn't think that was just four top four movies ever. I thought you just did whatever you wanted in there. Yeah, I'll just put the open house on there. I wouldn't just do a piece of shit, dumbass. <laughs> I would just do stuff I like. Okay. Well, most people <laughs> consider that your your favorite four movies. That's what the, kind of the whole point. Oh no, I know people that do it with like just their like their four most recent movies or four movies that they really like at the time. I'm pretty sure you change them too a lot. So yours aren't even set in stone. So you know that's kind of weird. I don't know how you would even know because that would require you to get on Letterbox, which you never do. So I check out stuff you look at it on. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. On occasion. I know you change them so. Either you change your top four a lot, or you're just full of shit, so. Crazy. Anyway, you're wrong. Incorrect. Um, let's see. I'm gonna say... Seven's on your list. It is not. Ooh. You fucking idiot. <laughs> um, so we both had four guesses. Yep. I've had one wrong. You've had two wrong. If we're, I mean, if we're keeping score, I'm gonna guess the Batman. The Batman's on there. Okay. It's really upsetting that the Batman is on there, and I don't have a single Superman movie on there. Yeah, because there's nothing, in, uh, like up to par in quality. Yeah. I've like, got the I've read got one's good, but it's not Superman the movie. That's the best Superman movie. I've yeah, had. like it's good, but it's not like top four worthy. Yeah. And Man of Steel isn't either. All right, so you guessed the Batman. Batman. Nice guys. Yep, that took a while. Well, I knew it was on there. I was trying to weed out all the mm. the questionable ones. Mm. Okay. Um... Interstellar. Yep. Okay. Nailed it. I'm going to throw out Game Night. It is not on there. Ooh. It's like number 13. Ah, just edged it out. All, All right. right. No big deal. Um, I'm trying to keep track of what guesses we're on. I'm going to write down mine. I've had two wrong, and you've had two wrong. I know you have four right. And then you guessed seven and game night. Yeah, so, so I've, you, I've had two wrong and you've had two wrong. Yeah, so we've both <coughs> guessed six. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is my seventh. I'm gonna guess... Top four. So... This is tough for you. Cause you don't you don't really use like hyperbole when you like what do you mean? when I talk about a movie like I like if I have a um a log for like Dune 2, 
I'll be like, yeah, Dune 2, my fifth favorite movie of all time. Like, I'll just say stuff like that all the time. You don't really do that. Oh, yeah, no. I'm going to guess Inception. Inception is on there. Hell, yeah. Good shit. I'm going to go Batman Begins. Swear to me! <laughs> Damn right it's on there. <coughs> all right, that was eight. Um. Wait. That was, yeah, I think that was my eight. I just guessed my seventh. So this is your eighth. So that no, was I my think, seventh. I think that was your seventh. That's okay, what I'm saying. So this is our eighth. Um, is there any more Nolan? Is Oppenheimer on there? It's not. I was really wanting to put it on there, but it's so... Um, dark to me the way it ends who cares that I'm like it's awesome I don't know dude it really uh, puts a hole in my stomach it's so good though it's so good okay (coughs) so we're on nine oh yeah I gotta guess you gotta guess Dark Knight Rises yep this just chump change (laughs) um number nine Prisoners? Nope. Hmm. Um. I got one more guess. Have I guessed Dune 2 already? Yep. Is Dune 1 on there? Dune 1 is on there. Hell yeah. This is our 10. Arrival. Arrival's not on there. That's insane feel like it should be <coughs> that tomorrow it might be this is just the list i made for right now um the last one for you uh, let me think here of your favorite shit i don't think back to the future's on there used to be i know it used to be used to be number uno and I grew a sack. I don't think the Dark Knight's on there either. It is not. I think your last one. I'm gonna go with Zodiac. Incorrect. Damn. That's not even at the moment in my top forty. Holy shit. That's probably wrong. I'm really like my top forty is really hard. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's a cutoff point at some point where, like, I'm okay. Like, there's a clear separator. Yeah. Where it's like, I love these movies, and these movies are just really good. Like, it's a lot more than 40. Like, there, there's some in the 50, 60 range that, like, I'm really upset. So, I'm gonna, I'm just going to have to keep expanding my list, because right now it's at 40, and, like, <coughs> not happy with it. But, but no. Zodiac's not on there. All right. That's our that's 10 guesses. 10. Okay, you got so five go wrong. I got three wrong. Yeah. You really folded. You predictable Not really. bastard. I'd, like, for you, like, you just don't, you don't, like, crown movies as your favorite often. Yeah. Or, like, one of your favorites. So. I just have a bunch that I love. They're, like, my, my children. Yeah. I love them all equally. I feel like it was it was a lot easier to guess mine, because I'm very outspoken about my favorite movies. It is. But... I'll go ahead and just run through my top 10. Don't downplay my win, but yeah, it, it was easier. My number 10, you would have never gotten this, but at the moment, it's Fellowship of the Ring. Oh my God. It's a new entry. And I knew you were big on, you know what? I should have gotten that after, after the fucking cum fest that you talked about yeah. with Fellowship. Like it <laughs> could be a little too movie. high because I have it over stuff like Dead Poet Society and like game night and drive. No, dude, it's whatever you whatever you feel. But like I don't know if it's true. Like right now it's there, but dude, making a favorites list is so hard. It is. I have It's really... easier to just do like my top fifty and then no no order. Just like yeah. these are just my favorite fifty movies. But like having to decide whether I like game night or drive more, it's like yeah. 
the fuck I mean, is going on? Fuck, yeah. like, what it feels am I, like a saw game. How do you even compare those either? Like, those are two different things. Yeah, full different vibes. Yeah, but my number 10 is Fellowship <laughs> of the Ring. Number 9 is American Psycho. Don't just look at it. Eat it. Eat it, yep. I knew that was going to be on there for sure. Why don't you get a goddamn job, Al? <laughs> yeah. One of the funniest movies ever. <laughs> um, number 8 is Interstellar. Oh, I didn't think you had Interstellar that high. Oh, I, boy, do I. I fucking <laughs> so love fucking that good, movie dude. so much. Um, number seven is Goodwill Hunting. Oh, yeah. I should have guessed Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, that, was, that was a fold on my end. I've been pretty out- outspoken about it being one of my favorites. Yeah. That and Dead Poets. I should have, instead of Zodiac and Seven, I should have done Goodwill and Dead Poets. Yeah, but those are the three you missed was Goodwill Hunting, Interstellar, and Fellowship. Oh, okay. Which I never expected fellowship, but I figured you'd get Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Um, and then number six is Dune. Number five is Dune Two. Number four is The Dark Knight Rises. Man, shit. Yeah, got to. Hassa, 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 Hassa. Rise. What does it mean? Rise. <laughs> Dude, I don't know why he says it like that, <laughs> but he says it so badass. Yeah. Like, why are you trying to be him right now, yeah. dude? You just fixed my back. You're a chiropractor. Yeah. Just calm down. <laughs> um, <coughs> Dark Knight Rises. How do I do it? Without the rope. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> that, that random that blind shit. guy just hanging out watching, yeah. him, watching him do shit. <coughs> you think fear... You, you fucking uh, I don't even know what you're going for I'm trying to help fuck I'm trying, I'm to, trying to, to help dude. I don't um, want you to, I don't want you to be hung out to dry like this but I, I don't know what you're trying to do um, you do not fear death you think this makes you strong but it makes you weak hell yeah that's dude. some fucking god that's fucking awesome damn dude you know what I saw recently? This is completely off subject, and I hate to cut you off, but that line, mm-hmm. it made me think. I've been, I saw a clip uh, from The Incredibles, and it was, um, uh, I forgot what he called him, Incrediboy. Yeah. Um, and it was uh, Christian Bale, like, bashing the Sigma Bale memes. And it was him instead of Mr. Incredible in a picture. It was Christian Bale, and he like fucking threw it off. <laughs> it was all upset. But the line of him saying when everyone's super, no one will be. That's kind of fucking yeah. hard, dude. Yeah, what that's the hell happened fucking... with that? That's some shit right there. <laughs> yeah, dude. Anyway, um, continue with your list. <coughs> number three is Batman Begins. Yep. I mean, come on. I mean. <laughs> Two is the Come nice on, guys man. and one is the Batman. Why do we force her? <laughs> That's my fucking shit right yeah. there. I um, failed you. Never. <laughs> Number two is the nice guys. <coughs> fucking, are you the guy? Yep. How do you know That's my name was say. Buddy? How do you know my name was Buddy? You know who else was just following you orders? You guys want to see my dick? <laughs> <laughs> Hitler only has one ball. <laughs> so I got a pretty big dick. <laughs> All right. Porn bad. <laughs> Where's the ankle gun? The fucking ankle gun. What ankle gun? <coughs> you told me you, you showed me you said this is my ankle gun. <laughs> oh shit! Did I, Did I dream that? that? Yeah, you fucking dreamt it. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, you're killing me. I like where your head's at, sweetie. I was like, <laughs> that didn't work, but it definitely could have. <laughs> oh man, that's oh, just it's so good. Number one, the Batman. We already gave you 20 bucks. What am I saying? <laughs> uh, number one's the Batman. Hell yeah. Fucking, they think I'm hiding in the shadows, but I am the shadows. Fucking, know who I am. Oh my God, dude. Um, get out of here, freak. That little freak's <laughs> going to get all full of blood. Mine are yours. Oh my God, God dude. Fucking, just makes me want to jack off. I got you on assaulting an officer. I've got you in assaulting an officer. I don't think I can get my voice that raspy, dude. That's <laughs> You're going to push your neck on the line for this scumbag, Jim. <laughs> He's putting Nick Nolte to shame, dude. <laughs> <coughs> All right, what's your 10? Um, my list, I have the nice guys, but you didn't guess. I, I didn't. <coughs> sometimes I don't know. 
if you actually like movies as much as I do, or if you just talk about them with me a lot because I like them a lot. And sometimes it's hard to tell, like, if I'm taken out of the equation, if you still like that movie as oh, much. Oh, no. I was, yeah. I love The Nice Guys. Okay. I think it's really funny. I was going back and forth between that and American Psycho on, like, comedy to put on there. Mm-hmm. And I went with The Nice Guys just because I feel like... Like it's the best shit ever made. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel less weird watching the nice guys and like laughing versus watching American Psycho. It's a lot laughing. easier to recommend yeah. to people. I can explain that the nice guys is a comedy. American Psycho is a harder sell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if people don't know what they're in for, like if you just recommend it to a coworker, like, yeah, check out American Psycho. Yeah. Like, eesh. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna, they're going to think you're fucking they might weird. might report you to HR. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the nice guys I have Dune on here. Hell yeah. Heat. Whiplash. I didn't know you had heat that high. Yeah, what I just hell? went to my letterbox and went to my five stars and just did ten like five stars. But like, there's... Well, no wonder I only got fucking like not a lot. Well, the ones you guess, I still wouldn't put in a top ten. I don't think. Like, I don't think I would put Mo- Moon. I don't have a five star. I've got it like a four and a half. <coughs> I don't know. Like, I just feel like you don't bring up heat a lot as like one of your favorite movies. Well, I don't talk about like. I don't talk about it just because it's like I've talked about it a lot I feel like okay but like I've got First Blood at a 5 star Fury Road 5 star like there's a lot of shit that I think is perfect yeah that I love T2 I almost threw on here For, is First Blood on there no oh. no they, they're just, just all movies that I think are like perfect that I love mm. um Whiplash was on here which that's a genuine like in my top 10 I feel like any time I do a top ten. Yeah, that could have definitely been a guess for me. And another one that's a genuine, like, probably will never change, Dune 2. Hmm. Dune 2 overthrew Interstellar is my favorite sci-fi movie ever made. Dune 2 gets my fucking blood pumping. Like, if you take my blood pressure, it's probably 400 over 400. It's dangerously high. Yeah, it's insane that people, like... Dude, it's... It's recency tax. Like, people don't want to admit how great it is because it's new. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Like, it's our generation's Empire Strikes <laughs> Back. Yeah. It's okay to say it's the best shit of the year. Because it is. Like, I don't care what the fuck comes out. Nothing is topping Dune 2. Yeah. I just, get chills when I watch Dune 2. I get chills just thinking about Dune 2. Dude, any t- like, someone says Dune 2, I immediately think of him saying, I'm pointing the way. And I'm yeah. like, ooh. My yeah. penis, like... Chill runs Pumps down up your spine. Yeah. Yeah, and then you start drinking the the blue liquid. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And you're like, fear is the mind killer. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I mean, of course. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to lead them to paradise. The fuck Nuke think? the sand fields. Yeah. Nuke the spice fields, sorry. <laughs> uh, Paul, they said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not going to eat. Uh... Uh, what it, he you, says he's not the chosen one, which means he's the chosen which one. Is exactly the, why he's the chosen <laughs> one. Because the chosen one would never admit that he's the chosen one. Dude, it's so good. <coughs> Dude, too, he's not guy. Yeah, he's not guy. Um, and then Rocky was Inception and Rocky. Okay, the other ones. Which Rocky, I don't think will ever leave my top ten. Yeah, I feel like I definitely could have gotten Whiplash. I thought about guessing Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I thought about putting that on there, but I went with Dune 1. Retrospect, I probably should have done 2049 instead. But Dune 1 is a movie that I feel like may go down over time. Yeah. Cuz like it's so it's so good at setting up the world, but it's not the most enjoyable experience on its own. Yeah. Out of all the movies that like I have on here, the ones that I could see sliding are like I could see Inception going further down, uh, the Batman, which I know you didn't want to hear. Uh, you could see that sliding down. Yeah. Damn. Like out of my top ten. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I could see that, and then um, rip. <laughs> <laughs> um, heat, I could see moving to a different place, but I think for the most part, Rocky Interstellar is a deadlock. Whiplash is a deadlock. Fury Road. Dune 2. I think my top, like, seven 
are pretty locked. I think Batman Nice Guys, Batman Begins, Rises, <coughs> Hunting, and Dune 2 are like pretty in there. Mm-hmm. And then the rest can kind of like flip flop. Like, yeah. I feel like Game Night could be at 13 where it's at now, or it could easily be 7. Like, it, it's. I respect the fellowship. It's like a pick, huge though. group. Huh? I respect the fellowship pick, though. Dude. Like, that's such an easy movie to watch. And it's such a great, like, you're having a bad day, so you just want to, like, go off into middle watch Earth. some tiny people have fun times. Yeah, you want to eat some second breakfast. Like, that's... <laughs> yeah. <coughs> oh man, it's Potatoes. just so fucking wholesome and sweet. That's why, that's why Fellowship's my favorite. Is like the nasty shit hasn't started yet. Yeah, and there's movies like just that, fellas. Yeah, there's movies like that that just like feel like Stand by Me. I have a, a five star. Yeah, that's another like hell yeah. Yeah, come on. Yeah, and you don't get many movies that are like sci fi fantasy that are also like just nice little like character movies. Yeah. Like, that aren't... Like, Fellowship has a story and, and some shit goes on, but for the most part, it's like character development and yeah. just hanging out. Yeah, it's it's really chill. Anytime yeah. you do fantasy or It's always su- such big stakes and, like, world <coughs> ending and, like... Yeah, fantasy, there's or, always, like, an impending war. And then sci-fi, there's always some kind of, like... Uh, some kind of antagonist like against them or yeah. something that's like or they're just having like fight against. world ending stakes like interstellar yeah like as much as i love interstellar it's just like it's an intense movie because of how much is at stake there yeah but like fellowship just guys hanging out yeah. for the most part i think i almost put uh Step Brothers on there but i didn't i almost made your real reveal Step Brothers. that would have been good i wanted to pick something easy like I picked one thing that was like kind of hard, which I thought the killer was like not something super obvious. But yeah. I, and then I thought about doing Step Brothers for the second one, but I gave you Interstellar and you still shit the bed. So <laughs> probably wouldn't have done very good. I don't know with comedy. I feel like I would have gotten it. I don't know. It would have been two words comedy. The year probably wouldn't have helped. I would have done like super bad. Yeah. Step Brothers. Yeah. Maybe we'll do better next time we do it. <coughs> maybe uh, maybe I need to maybe I need to channel my inner tism and uh learn movie years and memorize them. Yeah. Um But yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it for this week. Yeah. Um I still don't think anything's coming out like for us to talk about next week. I have to think of something else to do next week cuz Let's see. Oh, Beetlejuice. That comes out. I think you mean Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I think I mean Beetlegeist. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <coughs> I gotta tell you. Um, oh, they... Am I dumb? Is the first Beetlejuice... The first Beetlejuice, the title is spelled juice, like normal. But then in the movie, like on the gravestone, it says Beetlegeist. I think so. Because they pronounce it wrong and they're just like, Beetlegeist? Yeah. Because I was tripping. I was like, I thought the movie was like called, like spelled Beetlegeist. But like the the title's Beetlejuice. Yeah. But then in the movie, it's not yeah, spelled Yeah, I think like his that. tombstone is spelled. They that. just didn't, they just thought it would be too weird, I guess, to name it like weird like that. Beetlejuice is already It's already weird. weird. But, because I, I was like, did they... For Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, did they, like, change the, the spelling of the title? Because I thought it was spelled Beetlegeist, but I'm, I'm just fucking stupid. But, yeah, uh, that comes out this week, so we'll probably watch that, do a review, maybe, like... I was going to say rank Tim Burton movies, but <laughs> I've seen, like, just the Batmans. Oh, uh, he's got some... I've, I've seen, seen, like, Batman Before Christmas, the yeah. Batmans. I've seen Corpse Bride. I haven't seen Corpse Bride. Is that a Tim Burton movie? Yeah. Yeah. Frank and Winnie is that Tim Burton I think that is Tim Burton maybe I'm a fucking Tim Burton stan dude um, <coughs> let's see oh Edward Scissorhands seen that oh yeah Charlie and the Chocolate Factory boo that? that was like 
we don't reference this often because it's like godforsaken, but that was one of my like movies I would watch the most as as a child. Oh, yeah, it was, man. It just it came out when I was five. <coughs> I was the target audience. Well, you're safe now. It's all right, <laughs> dude. He. I was young when it came out. What an odd take on, on uh, Willy Wonka. Shit, dude. I've seen a lot of these. I've seen Sweeney Todd. I've seen Alice in Wonderland. I've seen Sleepy Hollow, Frank and Winnie. I've seen Dark Shadows. I'm sorry, but I've seen it. <coughs> yeah, I've just seen Scissor Hands, Chocolate Factory, Beetlejuice, The Batman's. That's it. So I would have a lot of watching to do if we ranked Tim Burton, and I don't wanna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's some stuff on there I don't wanna. Oh yeah, watch. Nightmare Before Christmas is a <coughs> Tim Burton movie. It's not. No. Who directed it? Henry Selleck. Oh. It's, it's Tim Burton's characters and, like, idea, but he didn't make it. Oh. So, but there's a big, like, That must be why it's really that. good. Because, like, it's called Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, <laughs> but, like, he didn't make it. And a lot of people think it's fucked up to, like, call it Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas when Henry Selleck directed it. But it's, like, it was his characters and story... So, I guess that's fair. I don't know. It would be like if if Aaron, if Moneyball was called Aaron Sorkin's Moneyball. It's like, still, I mean, I guess I don't see anything wrong with that. What? Well, don't they do that with, like, uh, Stephen King movies? Like, someone will make the movie, but it's Stephen King. They'll be at Stephen King's, yeah. like... They, they that, always attach it's Stephen King's... It's books. <coughs> it's like an adaptation versus Nightmare Before Christmas wasn't an adaptation of anything. It was just, like... A movie hmm. I guess it's a little different know. but like I think Stephen putting Stephen King's name on stuff though also is like alright let's sit down yeah let's check this out yeah um I like there was a weird thing that went on with Nightmare Before Christmas where like it's a Disney movie Disney bought it and didn't want for some reason like I think they didn't want Tim Burton associated with the movie and then something happened in like Dude, I don't, I don't fucking know. I, I don't know enough about it to get into it, but, like, eventually they were the ones that put Tim Burton's name on the movie. What the Because they thought it was, like, I guess his name got more popular, and people, like, they thought it would be a pull if they put Tim Burton's yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas in front of it. And it was kind of, like, fucked up the way they did it. Damn. I don't know. I'm about to investigate. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but we'll, we'll talk about Beetlejuice next week. I don't know what, like rank anything but we do a little Guillermo deep dive mm. that's actually worth checking out <laughs> I do love my little Guillermo that's yep. my pookie right there um, he's such a cute guy yeah um, yeah I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it am I right fellas yeah, oh, um, yeah. yeah you're gonna, you're gonna for, say uh, no to this guy Oh hell no! <laughs> That's what's happening. That's dude. my fucking dude. I just want to, I just want to give him a hug. Like, yeah, dude. he's the coolest just guy, the sweetest guy. Um, <coughs> but yeah, thanks for tuning into the film scoop, and film keep, scoop, film scoop. We'll see you next week. Keep scooping. <laughs>